Hi, thanks for dropping in. Welcome to Bro Photo. I'm Keith, and today we're going to be talking about the different kinds of film cameras. Last week we talked about Neeps in the first image. This was the development, quite literally, after the camera obscure and lens that ushered us into the age of cameras that we're going to be talking about today. Two innovators after Neeps are Fox Talbot and Louis Daguerre. Daguerre and Neeps were partners, and after Neeps passed in 1833, Daguerre got credit for the invention of photography. His process drastically shortened the amount of time it took to take an image, and in 1838, he took what is regarded to be the first image of people in human existence. While there were other people moving up and down the street, and the time it took to get a shoe shine, these two were immortalized for eternity. While this process yields a beautiful image, because it's on metal, it is not reproducible. This is the camera Daguerre used. It doesn't have a shutter. He controls light entering simply by taking the cover on and off the front of the lens. He sold the process to the government of France in 1839, and because much of European history is just England and France having beef with each other, the French make the process free to every country in the world except the English. This is both petty and hilarious. <laughs> Not to be outdone, in 1840, Englishman Fox Talbot invents a method that yields a paper negative, which is reproducible, called the calotype process. He uses this to start publishing his seminal work, The Pencil of Nature, in 1844, which is the beginning of photography uh, being an art form instead of a mechanical process. So about 160 years ago, we see the introduction of the negative positive method that is the dominant form of photography until the invention of digital cameras. The next step is the creation of emulsions that are more sensitive to light, which allows the capture of motions at faster speeds. This leads to the development of shutters that are more responsive to time than simply taking a lens cap on and off the camera. While there are different emulsion and shutter methods used, most of the cameras were the same design, which is still in use today. That's the view camera. That felt very toast. Yes. View cameras were the most common design for the first 60 years of photography, and their major advancement was having a bellows in them instead of being made out of a box. The bellows allowed you to vary the space between the lens and the negative, giving you better focus. The way you use these is that you load a film holder ahead of time with a piece of film, and then when you want to take it, you insert it into the camera, pull the dark slide up, make your exposure, and then replace the dark slide. So there's nothing inside these cameras once you take the lens and where the negative goes off. Hi there. The cameras vary in size from 4x5, 5x7, 8x10, 11x14, all the way up to 20x24. The advantage of these is that you get an enormous negative, and usually once you get past 8x10, you're making a contact print where the negative is in contact with the paper instead of making an enlargement the way you will with all the rest of these cameras. The next landmark was the mass production of roll film and portable cameras. In 1888, George Eastman introduced his first camera, the Kodak Black, with the tagline, you press the button, we do the rest. You would shoot an entire roll, send the camera back for processing, and they would send you prints. In 1990, he introduced the Brownie camera, which changed photography forever. The design of the Brownie camera made it very easy to use. There was a simple lens on the front, a viewfinder on the top to give you a rough idea of what you're going to see, a little shutter control on the side, and an advanced knob on the side also. So when you open the camera up, you're just going to have an area where film is going across the back, like this. And then you would advance it and it would get exposed until you got to the end of the roll. So the design of modern disposable cameras is very much the same. You have a little plastic lens, a shutter button, an advanced knob, and then you're just winding the film across the back and dropping it off. Holga and Lomo cameras follow the same basic design. They have a plastic lens, usually just a shutter button, minimal or no controls. The main difference is some of them are going to take 120 film, and then some of them are going to take 35 millimeter film. But once you get used to developing and scanning your film yourself, these are a very fun, inexpensive way to take pictures. And it's very easy to take these cameras with you. A lot of them are like hollow, oh God. 
We can be done. Fuck it. Let me see how far that tape went. By the 1920s, rangefinders have come into use. The viewfinder doesn't look through the lens, but it is tied to the focus. The little window above the lens right here lets in a second image that appears in the viewfinder. This is called split screen focusing, and it looks like this. Some advantages of rangefinder cameras is that they're smaller, quieter, and more durable than SLRs. They are most often used for street photography. SLR, or single lens reflex, is the most common design of camera and allows you to see exactly what you're taking a picture of. It does this by using a mirror and a penaprism. So the light travels through the lens, hits the mirror, which is at a 45 degree angle, goes up into the penaprism and inverts like this. When you take a picture, the mirror snaps up and the shutter opens, allowing you to expose your film. This is the same principle in a DSLR, except it's exposing a sensor and not a roll of film. TLR, or twin lens reflex, is usually used for 120 film. It has a lens on top connected to a viewfinder, usually a waist level viewfinder you use looking down into it, and another lens on the bottom connected to the shutter. The image isn't going through a penaprism, so it's reversed. This can take a little bit of getting used to when you start. We've talked about the different kinds of cameras. Next week, we're gonna go over how to make a proper exposure using aperture, shutter speed, and film speed. If you would like to get a head start on the lesson next week, download the free app, Lux Professional Light Meter on your phone and practice using it. So how you doing? There you are, another masterpiece.